Hello everyone and welcome back. In this new lesson, we're going to show you how to take an existing Angular Material data table, such as this one that we have here, and we're going to add it sorting capabilities. So the table has here several columns. We're going to allow the user to sort the data in the table by one of those columns. So we have here the sequential number column, the description column. Let's make the table sortable by these two columns, but there is no need to add sorting capabilities here for the duration column. Making an Angular Material Data table sortable is very simple. All we have to do is to apply here to the table HTML element the mat sort directive from the Angular Material library. And now we have here a sortable table, but we need to specify here what are the columns that we can sort on. So here we have the definition of the multiple columns. So if we want to make this sortable, we need to go to the header of each column and not the cell. So we need the header and to the header, we need to add the directive mat sort header. And we need to add mat sort header to all the headers of all the columns that we want to sort on. So here in our case, we only want to sort on the sequential number and also here on the description. And with this, these two headers of our data table are currently sortable. Let's have a look at this in action to understand how it works. So we have here our data table and if we hover over here our two headers, we're going to see here a small sort icon. So if I click on the header multiple times, we're going to see the sort order reverse and we also have the option of clearing the sort order. So that should display the data in its initial state without any particular sorting. However, as we can see, the data in the table is not yet updating according to the sort order. So this is normal. These directives that we have added here to the header simply add this visual element to the header. They also emit events, sort events. So what we need to do now in our component is to detect the emission of these events. And based on that, we need to update the content of the data table. Notice that we also have here active by default the possibility of disabling the sorting of the data table. Now, this is not something super intuitive. Probably what we want to do is to have our table set in a default sort order and we don't really want this ability of disabling the sort order. So let's go ahead and let's disable it by switching back here to our component and next here to mat sort. Let's apply here the directive mat sort disable clear. And if we now try this out and we switch back here to our table, we're going to see that whenever we choose a sort order and we keep clicking on the sort header, we can see that the order toggles from ascending to descending each time, but we no longer have the option of disabling the sort order. Another very useful feature of the material sort directive is the ability to define a default sort column. So in our case, we want to sort the table by default using the sequential number field and we want the sort order to be ascending. So we can define this in the following way by adding here next to the mat sort directive, the mat sort active directive. And here we need to pass in the name of the column that we want to use per default to sort the data. Besides the column, we also want to specify if we want by default to sort in ascending or descending order, and we can specify that using mat sort direction. So let's, in our case, sort by ascending order by default in the sequential number column. If we now try our data table, we're going to see that by default, the table starts here sorted by the sequential number field in ascending order as expected. So all that we did right now was to set up here the initial sorting of these visual elements here in our header. And we have defined the initial sort event that the material sort directive is going to emit when it's first instantiated, it's going to emit an event saying that the data should be sorted by the sequential number in ascending order. We now need to catch that event and combine it with the events emitted here by the paginator in order to update here the data of the table according to the sort order specified by the user. 
So how can we do that? We are going to go back here to our table and to catch the events here emitted by matsort, we're going to grab a reference here to the matsort directive here in our course component. In a very similar way to what we did with the paginator, we're going to grab here a reference to our directive using the view child decorator. So let's go ahead and let's define here a sort member variable, which is going to be of type mat sort. Let's now apply here the view child decorator and let's look for a directive of type mat sort. So this decorator is going to fill in this member variable with a reference to the material sort directive found in our component template. This sort member variable, because it's being populated with view child, is only going to be filled in by Angular for sure here in the after view init lifecycle hook. So if we scroll down, we're going to find here our current implementation of ng after view init. So here inside this method, we are sure that these view child member variables are filled in. That includes the paginator and the sort member variable. So now what we would need to do is to access here the sort member variable and here we are going to see that we have an observable emitted by it. This is going to be the sort change observable. As we can see, this observable is going to emit events of type sort that are going to include the new sort order and the new sort direction selected by the user using the elements on each sortable header. So we would like to take the events emitted here by this sort change observable and we would like to do the same that we are doing here with our paginator. We would like to update here the value of the data in our data table using load lessons page. Now because we would be doing here exactly the same thing, what we can do is we can combine the events emitted by both of these observables and whenever either one emits a new event, then in that case, we're going to be loading a new page of lessons. So how are we going to combine these two observables and create a new observable? Well, we want a new observable, a combined observable that emits a value whenever one of the two source observables emits a value. So that is the RxJS merge operation by definition. So let's go ahead and let's create here a merged observable derived from these two observables. We're going to add here the sort change observable and the paginator observable. And the resulting merged observable is going to be passed on to this observable chain. So now whenever either one of these events occurs, a new page of lessons is going to get loaded and the data on the table is going to get updated. Now the data needs to reflect here the state not only of the paginator, but also of the sort options. So let's go here to the load lessons page method and notice that here in the sort order, instead of hard coding it, we need to take this here from the sort directive. So let's access here the sort member variable and here we are going to grab the current sort direction. Now notice that this method lower lessons page can also be called here from ng on init. And at this point, the sort member variable is not yet filled in. That will only happen at ng after view init. So here, in order to prevent any errors, we're going to test for the presence here of the sort directive. And if the sort directive is not available, let's specify here a default value for the sort order as we did here for the paginator. Besides the sort direction, we also need to pass in here the colon that we want to use to do the sorting. So let's pass that here as the final argument to find lessons. We're going to access here the sort directive and we're going to access the active property. So this is going to contain the column name that we are using for sorting our data. Let's check for its presence. And if this is not yet available, then in that case, we're going to use by default the sequential number column. Now, just one last thing in our implementation before we try this out, we want to make sure that whenever we change the sort order of our table, meaning that whenever we sort by a different column, we want to reset our paginator and make it go back to 
page zero. So it really doesn't make sense to sort our data, for example, for sequential number, go to page three, and then we click on the description column and we change the sort order. Probably we want to go back to the first page of sorting. That's what the user expects. It would not make sense to go straight to page three of a different sort order in a different column. So in order to reset our paginator whenever we change our sort order, let's go ahead and let's take here the sort change observable. So we can use it to detect whenever the sort order gets changed. And then in that case, what we want to do is we want to set the paginator back to page one, which has the zero index. So we can access here the page index property and we can set it to zero. So this way, whenever we, for example, reverse the order of our sorting in the same column, we make sure that we always get back to page zero of the new sort order. And with this, we have finished our implementation of our sorting feature. Let's go ahead and try everything out from the beginning. So here we are on the courses page. Let's load our first page of data. So here it is. We are by default sorted by the sequential number field in ascending order. The paginator still works perfectly. So we have here page two and page three of our course. Now, if we change here the sort order and we reverse it, we have the lessons sorted in reverse order by the sequential number. And if we try to sort here by the description field, we can see that we can easily sort the data as well as expected. Let's now continue the implementation of our data table. We're going to implement a couple more advanced use cases. We're going to talk about multi-template rows. We're going to talk about expandable table rows. We're going to talk about sticky columns and headers. And we're going to show you how to do data selection using the Angular Material data table.